questions again, like, uh, what should I now, what should I do, you know? And so I gave him the same answers I've been giving him all along that I know of, because I don't know everything also. But um, just get your immune system supported as best you can. Get rid of the candida, because he was on so many antibiotics that, you know, his system is pretty fucked up. But he's okay uh, for today. Stable, you mean? Hmm? Stabilized? What's his diagnosis? He thought so until yesterday. He has a. You told me, sarcoma. Type of, uh, sarcoma. Yeah, sarcoma. Susie always sends me the latest, also. I mean, we, you know, I'm. It's something that I study, I'm sure you study, and we're, and uh, I was really shocked and surprised uh, recently when I was, um, I was just writing about Kathleen and Trish and Marilyn and like that, you know, growing up in, a, in the family, you know, when one by one my sisters got sick, you know, and, um, and, and then all of a sudden I just, like, went to Google and hit um, cancer 1960 um, polio vaccine. And I got like so much more, <laughs> it was insane how much information I got. And that's where I found out about that SV40 uh, vaccination, that in fact, they didn't take off the market even until the early 90s even knowing that it was a contaminated uh, vaccination. But I figured, I guess where my mind was at when I, when I Googled, Googled that was that, you know, I had just written about Marilyn and the polio, and then I was on Kathleen and I thought, I guess my mind was just thinking, well, of course, mom or somebody would have gotten a vaccination right away because mom wouldn't have wanted to go through another polio round after, you know, three years of Marilyn being sick. Hell no. And then, you know, what it said about this SV40, and of course, Columbia Presbyterian Hospital was right in the story also, and... Um, and doctors working in and around that, you know, that er that in that area of New York, whatever. There was other hospitals involved, but um, <clears throat> that the, the possibility of uh, cancer forming in vitro was written about also. That's so spooky. So his mom got the vaccination because Marilyn was sick. Because I remember we, or I don't know if it was you, but I definitely remember getting the vaccination for polio after we moved to Florida. And we went to the drive-in, the Delray drive-in, and we drank a little red paper cup. In the drive-in? We huh? In the drive-in? We went to the drive-in. I don't know if you were there, John, but I definitely went with mom in that Ford Sunliner convertible. Yeah, the white one. Uh huh. And I went with her in that car to the drive-in, and I drank a little paper cup of polio vaccine, and no, that would have been after 1960. But the possibility of mom getting a vaccine earlier because she was around Maryland so much would have been. Before 1960? Yeah. Huh? I don't remember when the, the Maryland polio situation, I don't remember the year that it started, actually. Maryland got polio way before 60, but we moved to Florida in 60, so this, this going to the drive-in thing would have been after, you know, either in 1960, 1961, something like that, right. 62, I don't know. <coughs> But um, Maryland's polio, I believe, was like 1955, six, seven, something like that. Maybe eight, nine. I don't. I'm not exactly sure about the age of Maryland getting polio. 
but it was after she broke her leg. How'd she break her leg? She broke her leg because we were on a seesaw that was behind the neighbor's house that lived across the street from us. You know, the Russells lived across the street. Yeah, straight across. And then there were a couple of other houses that, and they all had kind of yards that were expansive to the back. Yep, it kind of sloped down. Somebody had a seesaw. And Marilyn and I were on the seesaw. Marilyn was at the top, I was at the bottom. You know, the seesaw, I was down here. Yeah. And I got off. Boom. Yeah. And Marilyn broke her leg. Her leg went underneath the seesaw when the seesaw came down. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and uh, I definitely didn't do it on purpose, but it was a weird, you know, mm -hmm. it was weird. And then, uh, but well, that you were happened. both very the small. Big white cast happened. The what? You, you were both very small. Small. Yeah. Small she children. She probably was three. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I can definitely remember an event, but I'd, not not the details. Over by the Russells on North Irving Street. Yeah, it would have been behind the Russells or behind the people who lived. Well, there was an older couple that lived straight across the street, I believe. And then next to them was a family that had a bunch of kids that we were also close to. I'm not sure what their names were, but they had kids, and they had, you know, we were we were close to them as well. And then that whole area went back to the the like a small river or a brook, oh, and yeah. then behind that was the high school. Yeah, the brook was like the the. Um, I think I think they call it the Hohokus Brook, which. Uh, Went oh, all the way through the neighborhood down past uh, the baseball field towards uh, Graydon Pool. I think it went over to Graydon Pool, no? Yeah, it did. It did. Because I've, 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 I've looked at the map recently, you know, on, on Google Earth, actually. It went under Ridgewood and Avenue. Then, and then the, a Hearn, a Hearns lived on that street. Where if we wanted to go to Graydon Pool, we went Warren, down that street. Warren and Place. Another park. That was Warren Place. Warren Place was a dead end, and then you walk through there, okay. and you were at the park, at the baseball field, right. yeah, which is a, a, a wonderful neighborhood. Yeah, beautiful. But anyway, that was, I was just uh, kind of chronicling or thinking about that whole time and Marilyn being sick and then uh, and Kathleen being born and then instantly it felt like finding out that she had cancer. But, and then we moved immediately to Florida that same year. Yeah, I wonder, well, the, you know, the move was on, so it was just that Kathleen was sick was an unfortunate consequence of her birth, you know. Was, yeah. But but you're, you're putting... Then some, when I hit, when, when I found out about this SB40, because I've always wondered how could she be sick so quickly? with something so deadly that quickly after being born. I mean, it's like, you know, it was just a question in my mind my whole life, because usually you do not hear about babies being born and diagnosed that quickly. <clears throat> no, well, she, how, how long did she live? She was three. Yeah, she was born in March. 
She was born February 17th, 1960, and she died March 11th, 1963. Now you're talking. Born in February, died so, in March. And then I, I also remember mom telling me, or I, because I, I don't think I ever met the doctors, but mom telling me that if Kathleen lives past her third birthday, it means she's going to live. So we were, there was this kind of false hope or for, false confidence from that statement. So then when she got sick right, right at the end, it was all like, wah, you know, like a... Was it ever? Yeah. That was traumatic to say the least. And I believe Brian was sleeping in that room, no? I, I don't know, but I would ask him. I was not. I was in my room. Yeah, you were in your room, but I think there was two beds in that, in uh, Brian and Kathleen's room, and I believe Brian... You think he remembers? ...slept on the bottom. Of the I'm sure he'll remember. Well, I don't know if he'll remember. I mean, I don't know what people try to tune in, but I remember a lot, I guess, because Kathleen was somebody that was I was really close to emotionally. Well, we were all, like, um, right yeah. there, you know? We were young. Yeah. You know, young, and we were there, and Jody was, you know, trying to do her thing, and but there, there, you know, wasn't much to do. Yeah, and I had no idea how stressful it was that I, you know, we were living in this like pressure cooker of, of stress, you know, everything was like dad and mom and the stress and the Kathleen and, you know, all these different stressors. And then I had no idea that I was like uh, living in a, in a stress pool. <laughs> until, stress pool. Until I started seeing drugs and I felt so much better, you know, it was like, oh my God. I've been living this stressful life. I didn't. I didn't use the word stress at the time. No. But, uh, we, well, we just. It was just normal. You know, it was definitely pressure. It was definitely our normal life, but it took me a while to figure out that not everybody had that life. You know. No. We couldn't. And Trish, Trish was going off the rails at a pretty, pretty young age also. Immediately. But anyway, let's continue on Monday. Okay. After I talk to the, uh, Lori. Yeah, and uh, and in the meantime, I'm gonna look for all her emails. And uh, her name is Lori Edwards, right? Yep. I'm gonna look for all her emails and see what exactly what she was trying to tell me because uh, there's so many emails from Kate Clover, Alicia Clover, John <laughs> Leahy, Marilyn Pohl. You know, there's so many of those that I I really haven't sorted all those yet. I'd start with Lori. Lori, Lori, and you know Marilyn. Yeah, is everything else is just in the echo chamber. Right. The echo chamber. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you for informing me, and uh, I'll get back to you with. I'll let you know like what happened. Okay. Yeah. Well. It's we can communicate like this, it'd be easy. Not so difficult. Yeah, it's a big world, but uh, slowly, 
it's getting smaller. Crazy. Greg, you sound well? I'm, I'm probably well. I've got some minor shit, but uh, nothing I'm not going to fix. All right, John. Okay, sis. Great. Over now. Take care, okay? Bye for now. I'll let you know what happens after Lori. Bye-bye. You! You're there! Yeah. Half a world away! Okay. Bye.